Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today we're having a look at the Aperture Accent B7C Smart Globes. These boast an internal battery that can power the light for up to 70 minutes at full power. They have manual CCT presets, so a quick operation, as well as manual dimming. Via phone app you have a CCT range from 2000 to 10,000 Kelvin and a full HSI colour mode. All right, so before we get too carried away, I just want to point out here that these are not the finished products. I have pre-release samples. So I think the main difference will be uh, on the finished product, they'll have the instructions written on the globe, so you don't have to refer to the instruction manual. And at the point that I'm filming this, they haven't got the prices finalized, but they're telling me 60 to 70 US dollars is what they're hoping to be selling these for, which is insanely cheap for what these can do. A lot of money for a light globe, but these aren't your ordinary light globe. All right, so they come in a cardboard box, and the cardboard box is sturdy enough that you could use this for a very long time to store the globe in. You get your instruction manual, of course, and inside the box, there's a styrofoam cutout, or foam cutout, that the globe sits in to protect it, and there's another box underneath, and inside that box is a bag. All right, so you get the globe, you get a bag, and you get the box. So, um, that doesn't sound all that impressive, but wait until you see what this can do. Okay, smart globes are nothing new. They've been around for quite some time. So here's one I looked at um, a couple of years ago. I thought this was going to change the way I work on set because I could dial in a color temperature, I could dial in a color, for example. Beautiful, no worries at all. But here's the big point of difference between the Aperture Globe and pretty much every other smart globe I've come across, and that is no manual control on the other globes. Now, the vast majority of the time when I'm using a globe, I just want it to be 3,200 Kelvin or 5,600 Kelvin and dimmable. That's all I want. I don't want to have to run it through a phone app or like this thing through a Wi-Fi network. I can't be bothered with all that detail. I just want to turn it on and plug it in. That's it. So the Aperture unit has three, globe, three buttons on the globe. So you've got a power button, now, the first time you go to use this in your, in, your, uh, in your setup, you'll need to hold the power button down for five seconds to activate it. Then after that, you can just press the button a single time to turn it on and off. Now, if I press that button twice, if I give it two quick clicks, it scrolls through its CCTs. Okay, so it's got CCT presets. So I just keep pressing that a couple of times on scrolling through. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that's 3200 Kelvin there. And the other two buttons here are plus and minus. Okay, so I can dial in my brightness. So manually, I can go down to 10%. Now, the other thing I like is I can do these adjustments, the, the Kelvin adjustments and the brightness adjustments, in my hand here because it's got a built-in battery. And then when I screw it into the fixture, the, if the fixture is powered off AC, that'll then run the globe and charge the battery. Now, when you're operating off app, you do have complete control over your CCT range and you can dim in 1% increments from 100 down to zero. Now, of course, the next point of difference is this has a built-in battery. So it'll run for 70 minutes at full brightness off the internal battery. Now, the internal battery comes in handy in this situation where this didn't fit into the socket, or I wanna run it upside down so I have a graduation, so I can do that. Now, um, 70 minutes at full power, that's at 5,600 Kelvin or 3,200 Kelvin. So if you're using a color like this, which is using less emitters, you're going to get a longer run time at full power. So the next thing I want to talk about is just go over the features of it. Think about this as a mini Nova. So it's got the same CCT range, 2,000 to 10,000 Kelvin. Although when I tested this, it only got to about 9,000 Kelvin. And from 2,500 Kelvin, its color scores are almost identical to the Nova. It's just 1% lower. Below 2,500 Kelvin, I'd consider this light to be largely decorative. Unlike other lights that go down to 2,000 Kelvin, this does not have an amber emitter, and it shows. It had a very lousy TN30 color render score of 55, and the color vector is massively out of shape. However, from 2,500 Kelvin onwards, up until about 7,300 Kelvin, the color scores are fantastic out of this. You're typically looking at plus 94, and even scores as high as 95. So even though this is designed to go into a domestic fixture, you could use this as a key light. There's plenty of color render there for good skin tones and good color rendition. 
Now, just like the Nova, right up at 10,000 Kelvin, this thing still has a score of 92. Now, as I said earlier, these are full color gamut, which means they're using all of their color emitters in all of their modes. So for example, in the CCT mode, this isn't a bicolor light. It's actually using its warm white, cool white, red, green, blue emitters all together to vector into an accurate white point. So this tracks the Planckian curve. Also in the HSI mode, which is operatable via app, it uses all of those color emitters. So when you desaturate it to a white point, it actually desaturates to white color emitters, not to some crappy RGB mix like some other lights do. The one thing I've noticed with the uh, HSI mode, I'll just turn the other lights down, is the colors are very highly saturated. So highly saturated, in fact, that um, if you take a reading at 50% saturation with a meter, it'll still read as 100% saturated. So that's not a criticism, it's just an observation. So at the moment, what I'm finding is there tends to be two uh, paths of thought with uh, HSI modes from manufacturers. One is deep saturated colors. So um, manufacturers like, like the Titan Tudes, for example, have deep saturated colors. And the other path of thought is tying it in with D55 or D65 standards where this, the colors aren't that aren't that vibrant, they're a bit muted. So it's not a criticism, it's just an observation. If you want um, you know, really bright, vibrant colors, um, then you're gonna love this. And the cameras can handle it these days. It's not that, that big an issue like it was, uh, say, five or six years ago. Now, in the app, you also have special effects. So for example, here we've got the fire effect. Um, let me just turn the house lights down. So you, know, you could have this in, in a lamp like that, for example. Uh, giving you a giving you a candle effect it feels a little bit mechanical but i think it'd be okay if you had it as a background element it doesn't feel it doesn't have that natural roll off like a candle but it's not too bad i've got to say you've also got things like um let's have a quick scroll through uh party lights uh, so i think a lot of people will um will probably uh buy these lights just to have them around the house for party times because they are cheap enough to do that but the one effect that um is actually useful um, is faulty bulb. So um, yeah, this is the one time that faulty bulb actually makes sense because it's actually in a bulb. Now these globes have two modes of operation, AC and DC. So DC basically means it'll run off the internal battery. All right, so regardless of whether you're in AC mode or DC mode, as soon as the globe receives power through a socket, it will turn on. Now in DC mode, you can turn the light on by pressing the button here, and you can turn it off by pressing the button there. In AC mode, it will only turn on when it receives power through the socket, and it will turn off when that power is removed from the socket. You cannot turn it on and off via the switch. Okay, so I'll just show you what I mean. So this one is currently in DC mode. So I'm gonna remove the power from the lamp. So as you can see, power's removed from the lamp, and this has stayed on. It's only gonna turn off when I press the button or when the battery goes flat. Okay, now I'm gonna put this one into AC mode. I'm gonna change the mode of operation. So how you do that is you turn the light on and then you press all three buttons down at the same time. Just give them a quick press. And when you do that, this will go green and then turn off. There we go. All right, now to check that you've got it in AC mode, you press the power button down, hold it for five seconds, and then it will blink three times green. Okay, so that means it's in AC mode. So if you've got a globe and you can't turn it on and you're trying to run it in DC mode, just hold the button down to see if it's in AC mode. And then it will flash three times. Okay, so that's telling me it's in AC mode. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in the lamp. Now when I turn the power on to the lamp, the globe will turn on. And when I turn the power off, the globe will turn off. So that comes in handy if you're doing the gag where you want the actor to turn a light off or if you've got the globes in your ceiling and you want to turn them off without having to go up a ladder. Now, if we want to get it back to DC mode, turn the light on, hold the button down until it starts flashing green, and then press all the buttons at the same time. It'll go a solid green and then turn off. Okay, then press the power button down, hold it for five seconds, and it should turn on in DC mode. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go through the phone app because that'll take too long and I've done it in other videos, but I am gonna show you how to link the light to the app. So the thing to understand here is you're not linking the light to a device, you're linking it to an account, okay? So what I mean by that is if I link the light to this iPad, 
tomorrow when I use my phone, I don't have to relink it, okay? It'll automatically be linked to everything that's uh, linked to my account. So when you download the app and put it in your device, you have to enter in your email address and password, all right? So that's why you have an account. All right, so uh, in order to link this, what you need to do is unlock it to, to allow it to be locked to um, your account. So how you do that is you press the power button and the minus button or the power button and the plus button simultaneously and hold them down for five seconds. So let's do that. And after five seconds, it'll flash red, green, blue, and white. Let's have a look, red, green, blue, white. So that's ready to be linked. Now I've done that on the other globes. Now the next step is open up the app, uh, set up a scene. Click on that scene, you'll see the green plus button. Click on that and it'll let you know which devices are available to be linked to your account. Link, uh, select all to link them and press set up. Now it does take a little bit of time to set up the link. Okay, 100% successful, click okay. Now all three lights are linked into your software. To figure out which light's which, you just press the button and that light will flash. All right, so let's start off the technical review by talking about Flickr. Now I couldn't get any Flickr out of these with a shutter speed of 1 3000th or below. Now above a 1 3000th 300th shutter, I hate these words, uh, I could start seeing Flickr. So uh, below 3000th of a second, you should be fine. Okay, let's talk about CCT accuracies. Okay, between 2,000 and 2,500 Kelvin, the most of the units were out by was minus 94 Kelvin. Between 2,500 and 3,000 Kelvin, they were typically out on average by only minus 16 Kelvin. Between 3,000 to 4,000 Kelvin, they were typically out by only minus 15 Kelvin. Between 4,000 to 5,000 Kelvin, they were typically out by minus 63 Kelvin. And between 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, that jumped to an average accuracy of minus 98 Kelvin. Now, when I dialed in 10,000 Kelvin, I only got 8,996 Kelvin. Now let's have a look at color render starting off with our SSI scores. At 3,200 Kelvin, tested against the 3,200 standard, these scored an impressive 85. At 5,500 Kelvin, tested against the CIE D55 standard, these scored an impressive 75. Now let's have a look at TM30 color vector testing. Between 2,000 and 2,500 Kelvin, there's quite a bit of variation. The worst score was at the bottom end at 2,000 Kelvin, where these only scored a 55. However, by 2,500 Kelvin, they're scoring a very healthy 94. Between 2,600 Kelvin to 3,300 Kelvin, these scored a very healthy 95. Quite an impressive score. Between 3,400 and 4,300 Kelvin, that dropped to a still impressive 94. And between 4,400 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin, you're looking at a 95. And all the way up at 10,000 Kelvin, that drops down to a still impressive 92. Now let's have a look at white point accuracy, and we do that with the Delta UV scores. Between 2000 and 2400 Kelvin, the most it was out was minus 0 0.0018. Between 2500 Kelvin to 4000 Kelvin, these were ridiculously close to the Planckian curve, out by an average of 0 0.0004, which means my meter could be wrong. It was that close to pure white. Now between 4,000 to 5,000 Kelvin, they were out by an average of 0 0.0010, which is less than a 1 16th correction gel. So ever so slightly green, less than 1 16th correction gel, not really perceivable by the eye. And between 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, they were out on average by 0 0.0012. Now let's take a look at our more commonly used Kelvin, starting with 3,200 Kelvin. When I dialed in 3,200 Kelvin, I got 3,187 Kelvin. The TM30 color vector score was 94% color render with 103% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And the white point accuracy is staggeringly good with a delta UV of plus 0 0.0003. When I dialed in 4,400 Kelvin, I got 4,380 Kelvin. The TM30 color vector score was a very impressive 95 with a 103% saturation average. Here is the wavelength analysis. And the white point accuracy was very good out by 0 0.0006 delta UV. When I dialed in 5,600 Kelvin, I got 5,512 Kelvin. 
with a very impressive TN30 color vector score of 95% with 103% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And the light is ever so slightly green by about the equivalent of a 1 16th correction gel with a delta UV score of plus 0.0014. Now let's have a look at our color vectors. Red, which should be zero degrees, came in at one degree. Green, which should be 120 degrees, came in at 118 degrees. Blue, which should be 240, was smack on at 240. Now let's take a look at our secondary color vectors. Yellow, which should be 60 degrees, came in at 71. Cyan, which should be 180 degrees, came in at 190 degrees. And magenta, which should be 300 degrees, came in at 282. All right, that's another episode of Gaffering Gear done. See you next week. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.